Welcome, everyone. I wrap in. As you can see, I'm not in your picture and won't be this week as I'm out of town on vacation. And I'm not certain I'll be doing these every day. But today's one of those days. It's pretty hot where I'm at. And uh, I'm indoors. And I said, hey, let's get one of these done for everybody while I'm gone. I, I like to keep up with the market. You can see that the grain markets got hit hard. And after the market closed today, the crop conditions reports all came out. And they look as though this market is doing well. Uh, we're right now at 4.45 p.m. Central Time, and that's why the boards are clearing up. So it's nothing wrong with this. This is what happens is you get pre-orders from the exchange. They pull the quotes, and then what happens, orders can start going in for the night session. In terms of day's activity, in the morning, you're going to get the import-export price index data. That comes out at 7.30. The Red Book Group will come out at 7.55 with their weekly U.S. retail sales. The National Association of Home Builders will release their monthly market housing index at 9. It's looking to go up one point, not very much, but a point higher. The API will come out with their numbers at 3.30 in the morning, followed at 9.30 in the morning on Wednesday by the EIA. Now today, President Trump, the uh, the assassination attempt that we all heard about, uh, I'm sure we're, we're all waiting to see poll numbers, but many people think his poll numbers will go up from this. He raised his hand, bleeding face. I mean, this is stuff made for TV. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the person that shot at him uh, died, you know, and uh, the Secret Service is going to be under great scrutiny. How could they allow this to happen? I mean, he is a polarizing figure. You would think that they'd have had drones in the sky, helicopters, and here's a, a young kid, uh, 20 years old, on the roof that other people are seeing, and they're screaming, they can see him, and yet uh, the Secret Service did not do their job with it. At least that's the accusation. I happen to think the agency's terrific, and they are in the hardest of hard situations. And, you know, it's just the way it works in the world. If somebody wants to get somebody, we've seen that. We saw, uh, in my lifetime, Kennedy, Reagan shot, and now the, uh, the attempt ended, hit President uh, Trump. So that's where you're at. Uh, J.D. Vance, as you know, has been chosen now as the VP running mate, so everything will get going. The nomination numbers are in the bag, so we will see the president take the nomination, and this will be his crowning moment again. And he won a big case today uh, on data that was thrown out of court. It'll be appealed, but uh, he won another case. So, so far for the moment, at least, uh, things are going his way, and he is alive. As for the markets, well, as you can see, you've been staying right over this 18-day average, I'm sorry, 18-week average of closes because we're on the weekly close-only chart. You see that all through here. So as long as you stay there, you have upside bias. The next important thing is when we look at the chart action, we had a market that uh, if we look at these highs, this was the high of Thursday at 5707.75. You had an outside day down and you took out the high of that day. A failure sets itself up and it's already set itself in the sense that an outside day, you should not have taken that out, but a double failure if this low a Friday is taken out in fast order. That would be a trap up here, and the market could set itself off to a break. It cannot afford now to take out the lows, and we've got to keep our eye on that. The pattern of the chart with the swing line is higher and low, higher, high, and you can see the importance right here of Friday. So this low of 56.18.75, in my opinion, that is going to be an important number. Otherwise, you can go into a stall pattern in these markets. The market is sitting well over the 18-day average of closes. And to get down to it, you'd have to lose the uptrend to get down there. So the market would not be a buy under current circumstances at that number if it were to be hit tomorrow. Rather, you'd have a higher high and lower and low pattern. When we look at the resistance, I think it's crystal clear. It's the upper Bollinger Band that is holding the market. It is not breaking the market. That is not the idea 
of, of Bollinger Bands. The idea is it's, a, it's an objective. The market will only stay over at 5% of the time. When it's arcing higher, if it's hit over and over, I label that the gorilla glue trade because what it often does is it forces the slow stochastic to try to embed. Embedding is when the red and the blue numbers go sideways over 80. You tried to lose that number on Thursday, as you could see. On Friday, the market came back and held it, and today it's up again. But on the first move where the red line closes under 79, be careful. It's probably a sign that you want to get back to wherever the 18-day average is. Until that happens, the pros will buy this market. And as I said, I don't think that you should be taking out Friday's lows. That would be one ugly chart picture. In the NASDAQ, not the same picture at all. You had an outside data to the downside, as you can see, back on Thursday. On Friday, you it continued that down, made a lower and low, close to fraction higher and bouncing today. But in this market, you had lost the bullish embedded reading back on Thursday. Before the market goes for this high of 209.83 and a half, my expectation is the market will make a run for the 18-day average. And that number is, I've got it right here, is uh, 202.79.99. So let's call it 202.80. That's the near-term target at this point in time before it makes a new high. When we look at the Dow Jones, there's been a shift into the Dow and into the Russell is traders are more and more convinced that the Fed is going to cut rates in September. There's now a 90% probability in the swaps market. Chairman Powell was speaking today with David Rubenstein on Bloomberg. And from everything I read, he said that he, yes, the first quarter, the Fed had no confidence that their targets were working. It doesn't mean they wouldn't work. They needed more time. But the second quarter, they were much more pleased. They're getting the results they want. Well, that makes sense. So now what I told you is I do think you're going to have to see a good July and August set of numbers in labor and CPI, just what the Fed mentioned, Fed Chair Powell in order for them to have the confidence that they can begin the rate cuts. We will see. Don't know how the numbers are going to end up. Here's what I can tell you. I teach that you don't buy over Bollinger Bands. Why would you? Only 5% of the time do you stay over them. You can fall back and be at a higher overall number, but you've got to wait on that. In addition, you have an overbought market. It either embeds or it corrects the overbought condition. In the Russell, it's a similar thing. You now have three days in a row running. The market was down to this narrow band. It blew that out. Remember we were, I was saying to you, I said eventually these narrow bands get resolved one way or the other. I mentioned last week, I believe it was, that I'll have clients that are buying calls, puts, and they'll play that the market's going to get a, a market that blows up one way or the other. Well, that certainly paid off in spades because the calls worked, the puts didn't, and you've probably made your money on that. Doesn't mean the market can't go higher, but the first level of that's out of the way. I would now like to see, does it embed or is it just stay overbought? But until the market pulls back under this low, right over here, the 2015 level, I contend that hard breaks are a buying opportunity. And I'm looking to see if we can get a market condition where the 18-day average gets over the 100. Then you'd have the shorter term average over the medium term, the 100. And the 100 is already over this gray line, which is the 200. When we step over to the notes and bonds, you're in overbought territory, certainly in an uptrend. The first challenge of the Bollinger Band got thrown back. You're seeing over and over how these Bollinger Bands work. I have a course on it that you can, at any point during these videos, click up at the top of your screen and an icon will appear. And it'll take you to the area where we've got the courses. And it's at irapstein.com under courses and everything's there. And we'll put an ad at the end of this for you so you can see that too. But once you learn how to work with these, it opens up another avenue for you. You can see how the market is running at that band here. Are we embedded? Well, let me explain this. You're not here, but day one of trying to embed was on Friday. Both numbers were over 
80, and today they're both over 80. Tomorrow's a crucial day in these markets, so I'll be watching notes and bonds to see if they can embed or not. In the dollar index, you're down to a support area, a big one. The market paid absolutely zero attention uh, back here on Thursday to the 100-day average in the Bollinger Band. Underneath the market was waiting the 200-day average, and that's what the market began finding its footing at, both on Thursday, Friday, and today. That is not a bull sign. It is a sign when you're oversold that that's the number. The pros are probably taking some money off the table if they're short on. In the euro currency, you've been riding the upper Bollinger Band three days in a row. If we do it again, it's a gorilla glue trade, and it's even more bullish than it looks out here. You've got day one of embedding. Nope, day one was uh, on Friday, both numbers over 80, and today's day two. So tomorrow, you, you hear the term Tuesday reversals often. It would not surprise me that we try to break the euro to keep it from embedding and rally the dollar. If those don't work and you embed, you're just locking in the treads until those uh, are lost. And that means more of the same ahead. In the British pound, same thing. You've got now your sessions where you're trying to set up that these markets are going to be able to embed. We'll see. Today was day two. You're at the upper Bollinger Band. You've run it for four days. You have the Gorilla Glue trade. You came out of a somewhat sideways action over here. I wouldn't call it classic sideways action, but it did have all the earmarks of that, and it's broken out to the upside with the new government. In Bitcoin, Bitcoin, as soon as it saw the president shot, I was watching the cash Bitcoin. Remember, it trades 24 hours a day, not in futures, but in the different crypto exchanges, and it immediately had a bid. And it's kept that bid. Now, is it a combination that the SEC is going to do something for Ether? Is it a combination you got too low? Don't know. But what I do know is the market's back in an uptrend with this. And the support's going to be generated near 60850 You wouldn't want to see prices back under the 50 6,690 and the next upside target is the combination of the 100-day average right up here and the Bollinger Band. When we look at the energies, they're in a move to the downside. So the trend has changed again, but very important. Are you noticing how the Bollinger Bands are narrowing in? So the volatility is coming out of this market. The trend is down. If it breaks further, the support comes in between 83.60 to 83.24. In order to break the downtrend, you got to get back over Friday's uh high and then your resistance is going to be wherever the Bollinger Band is. This is not the place to be right now. Everything's narrowing in on the volatility. Same identical thing is happening in WTI going home. The bears took control of the market as the market is trying to close. It hasn't completely done it. You finished at 81.91. The 18-day average is 81.95. So I look at the market in this way. Lower highs, lower lows under the 18 day average momentum down until the market gets back over Friday's high of 83.74 I believe the bears have control and the target could be the 80 area remember the Biden administration has given itself to buy uh, another group of a large amount of oil at I think it was 79.50 if they could get it We'll see, and I believe that uh, that tender was out there to the 18th of July, so this is the week where it's going to be ending, so we'll see if they can get anything bought. Lower highs, lower lows, you're in a downtrend now until you take out the highs of Friday right here, excuse me with that, right there, at uh, 252.86, downside target right through here, but already oversold. And that gas just keeps leaking away. I look at a market here that just wants to continue to drop. You finished off at uh, 232, and now you're down to uh, 215. Been coming down, and as I told you, where I've got the clients in this market has been in UNG. The chart picture was actually better, and it seems to be working out as a better type of trade as far as I can see. So again, you can move your cursor anywhere up here if you want to learn more about the enhanced Bollinger Band course. You can go to irapstein.com under courses or just stay right here and take a look at what we have next for you. Welcome. I'm Irapstein and I'm here to talk about my enhanced 
Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches on to that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.